So this Wednesday, I believe, um, I'm going out fishing on a boat with a friend. He works at Float and Fish, and uh, every time I go in, he always asks, uh, you know, how the channel's going. He actually watches my videos, and he was telling me that he's been out fishing Navajo Lake, uh, which is the lake that San Juan River um, is is the tailwater for. And he said, right now, the smallmouth bass are just going crazy. He said every time he goes out, he's catching quite a bit. And he has a boat. I don't. I don't have a boat um, as of yet. Uh, not at least in this area, I don't. Um, where I used to live, I had a boat. I had to sell it. Uh, but I'm going out fishing on the boat. So I'm bringing my waste bag. But this also kind of doubles as a chest bag, too. I usually use it around my waist. Um, I've got this set up. Um, to go. So my beat up muddy box, which by the way, these boxes are absolutely awesome. For nine bucks, I think I got it for nine ninety nine, ten dollars, and these are great. They uh, got nice uh, foam here, and this is this is what I use all the time for my streamer box. And they just they work really nice. By the way, if you have never checked out my my uh, crawl dad fly, it's called the bad bass, <laughs> kind of play on wor words there, a uh, bad bass crawl dad. I've got a video um, of making this and it's pretty nice. Works really well, sinks to the bottom, the rabbit strips will kind of stick up, especially as it floats down and really, really works for bass. So I'm definitely going to be bringing that. But he said right now he's been catching them on streamer. So here's my, my streamer box, this is what I'm bringing with me. I've got a couple carp flies here too because that last trip where I caught the carp, oh my gosh, that was fun. And I know there's lots of big carp right in uh, the um, Navajo Lake too, so we'll see. If we come across some, I might throw some of those on and, and cast out. But So this is basically my streamer box. Um, definitely, because there are rainbows in there, I'm definitely bringing my uh, um, new pattern. You know, I don't know what I'm calling it yet. Well, you'll see. Um, I've got a video coming out on it, so you'll, you'll see. I'm bringing that. I'm hoping that'll work um, because there, there are rainbows. There's small rainbows in there, and this should mimic that perfectly. Um, obviously, my uh, lion head sculpin, and so I'm bringing that. That's going to be my, my main streamer box. I've got a couple, you know, like popper type things, uh, top water stuff. Um, oh, here's another one of those crawdads. Um, bad bass crawdad. Got this pretty cool thing that I got once um, a while back. We'll see. Um, it's a little spoon. And uh, obviously some uh, um, clouser minnows. I just throw those in there for when I just kind of dink around for bass. So I'm also going to bring a whole bunch of other flies that I have um, that just won't fit in one streamer box. Um, I've got a couple of those, but some of these also just kind of streamer box will kind of flatten these out. And this is that bluegill pattern that I have. I'm bringing a couple of those. Hopefully that'll work. Um, I think it will. I've got my um, fathead squishy streamer, which returns back to shape. Um, I've got that with me. I've got a couple of those. I've got some other just simple little smaller flies, um, just like that. Uh, some little bait fish flies, smaller stuff. Just kind of threw a whole bunch in there. Um, I've got these. Uh, um, EP style type flies. I'll be bringing um, some more poppers here. Uh, I mean, we're bass fishing, you know, it's bass. So uh, there's also bluegill in there. So I got some smaller poppers in case the bass aren't hitting that day. Um, just a whole bunch of stuff that I'm bringing. Ooh, that actually could be a really good carp fly, I think, with those legs. Uh, just some random stuff, some I bought a long time ago from some fly shop. And some more of these smaller size spoons, a couple of them. There's a little larger one. Um, 
some chartreuse glass minnows. When those get wet, they'll kind of not look so funky. Over time, sitting in the box, they kind of frail, uh, fray out, but just tease them a little bit and they'll get back to, to normal. Um, obviously, a bunch of like woolly bugger type things should work. Uh, got this. I'm actually really excited about this. I think this will work too really well. And that's that um, reverse tide uh, craft fur streamer that I made. So that should work really well, I think. Nope, this is a reverse tide craft fur streamer. Forgot what I called this. But, so yeah, I'm really excited about this trip. I haven't done bass fishing on the fly in a long time because I, I don't have a boat here. And most of the lakes around here that have bass, they're big, so it's tough to do um, shore fishing with them. So uh, you gotta get out far, you gotta get deep, you gotta find structure, you just need a boat. And I don't have one, so I'm really excited to go. Uh, it's really nice of him to, to take me. So um, hopefully you guys will see that. Uh, I think that's coming out this week. Uh, well, I'm going this week. Uh, by the time this video uploads, I think uh, I think that'll be the next trip. Um, maybe the trip after. So um, stay tuned. Maybe maybe a week or two um, until that video comes out. But this is a really really awesome bag. I really like it. And obviously, I'm going to be on a boat, so I'll, you know, and it's bass, so I'll just bring my. I don't need um, forceps necessarily. I've got some heavy tippet, 14 pound and 16 pound. Um, hopefully it'll be enough. If not, I'm going to be bringing, I gotta, I gotta find it somewhere. I've got to bring my, uh, <clears throat> I think I have like 20 pound uh, uh, fluorocarbon, just regular line for, for bass fishing, um, conventional. Got all my heavy uh, um, leaders. Of course, this is saltwater. Uh, style leader, but for redfish, but I mean, you know, 12 pound, 20 pound, should be, you know, 10 pound, should be enough for them, should work. And I, you know, I only go once a year down to the Gulf, so might as well use that up because I don't want the tippet to go bad. So that's what I'm bringing, but I really like this box. So it's got. So it's got these compartments here. You can stick, you know, boxes, whatever you want, um, just like so. Got more, com got more compartments down here. Bring some snacks with me. Um, these big boxes kind of don't fit necessarily in there, but they they just kind of stick in like that, and there's ample room. Um, and then it's got this flap that on both sides has these compartments also. Okay, let's see, both sides. Another thing I really like is that on the outside here, it's got um, a place that you can stick like a foam patch um, Velcro, uh, which is nice. So um, I got to get that off of my vest and put that on there, but it'll be a Velcro crow patch that I can just stick flies, you know, when I'm fishing. So this is kind of nice. I'll, I'll be using it. But the best part about this is this does not get hot, so when you're wearing it, it's got this uh, mesh um, and these like little bumps that stick out. So it allows for air to flow right through there, um, which is really nice. And I just kind of clip everything to the top loop here. Um, when I actually start fishing, I'll put I'll take these off and put them on like my belt. Um, I've got some more tippet here for lighter stuff in case they're getting really finicky. I doubt I'll use 5x for bass, just not going to happen, but I got it there in case there's some trout or whatnot. Um, this is a big lake and there's trout, there's salmon, there's uh, there's pike, that would be really cool, carp, um, all types of fish. I really like this box, it's made by Sims, it is pricey, um, but it's a really good box, uh, I really like it. Um, I used to take this all the time, every time I would go to the local lake up in uh, um, Napa, where I used to live. So, um, just a great box. I'll put a link down in the description section if you guys are interested in checking out this box. Um, it's awesome. I also want to talk to you guys about thread. 
So if you have trouble um, with differences between types of fly tying thread, it can be daunting if you're, if you're not familiar with it. Um, first off is, um, you know, the normal, the 70 denier. I mean, most people, uh, so this is Danville's 70 denier. Um, Ultra Thread, UTC, also makes the 70 denier. And most of these also make the 70 denier. Now that's a, that's a, a rating of the, how thick the thread is, and both of these should be the same thickness. Now there is some differences between these threads, um, but they're, they're about the same thickness. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean same breaking strength though. Different brands use different materials, um, different ways of um, uh, making the, the thread, uh, so that way, you know, it, um, some lay a little flatter, some are a little more round. So for instance, the Stanville's um, Flymaster is uh, the 70 denier is round. It's it's more kind of it, like a regular thread that you're used to. It's round. Yet this UTC, the the Ultra Thread, is is not round. It lays flat. So um, you know that can actually be good. Um, also, sometimes you this would be a little stronger. But that's 70 denier. So that's the normal. This is what you use for many 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 types of flies. Uh, that's the most common. Um, then you can step up, uh, like for streamers and whatnot, smaller like trout streamers. Um, you can step up to like a 140 denier. This is UTC, uh, same brand as the 70, only this is the 140, and this is also flat. Um, you know, and it, it lays nice and flat, um, but it's a little stronger, and it would be definitely even stronger than this, um, than the the Danville's 70 denier, because it is a thicker thread, um, but it lays nice and flat. Um, and it's uh, you know it's 140, so this is what you would want to use like a like a larger size for like trout streamers. Um, now um, there's other types like if you're going to go with midges, you can go super fine. So Vivas makes a kind of like a rounded thread, at least for their 16 knot, and they go by the OT system. So this 16 knot, um, which is more like I don't know the exact denier size of it, but it's much more fine. Um, it's going to be hard for you guys to see from there, but if you kind of hold them up next to each other, the 70 and this, I mean, this is just, I mean, this almost looks like a hair, a uh, human hair or something, but it's really strong. Vivas makes a very, very, very strong thread. They're known for that. Vivas is another brand. So you've got UTC, Ultra Thread, you've got Danville's, um, uh, Danville makes thread. Vivas is another brand that makes thread. You're not even going to be able to see that no matter how close I bring it. I mean, it's just really, really fine. And that's great for tying midgets. Um, you know, uh, and then and then Danville makes this 210. And actually, I think all the, a lot of the brands make some thicker thread like this. The two, this is what they call their 210 flat waxed. And this is really strong. I can't. I can't. I'd actually cut my finger if I tried. I cannot break that. Um, this is very, very strong, um, but it's also what they call it the flat wax. So this is, um, it's going to sit flat like this UTC um, Ultra Thread um, on the on the hook shank, but it's also really, really strong. So this is what you would want to use for like bass flies, um, you know, whatnot, something like that. Um, and I believe um, UTC also makes some, um, you know, there's some other brands um, and, you know, this is strong enough for 90 percent of your large streamer flies. I generally, they call it flat wax, so this is waxed, right? Um, some threads are not waxed, they're not pre-waxed, uh, but that is. Um, now, then um, Uni makes something called big fly thread. Uh, while 210 flat wax is 210 denier, this is 400 denier, so this is super, super thick. And actually from there, I'm sure you can even see that. Um, and this is very, very strong. Uh, this is probably, I wouldn't say double the strength, but there's no way you're going to break this. Um, and, you know, I, I use this for big, big saltwater flies. You could use it for like pike, um, that kind of stuff. That's really what you're going to want to use the big fly thread for. I mean, it's named big fly thread for a reason. It's for big flies. Um, so something that you really need to kind of put a lot of torque into, um, maybe even use it to build uh, bodies faster. Um, you know, so that's basically what you use that for. 
Occasionally I'll use this to spin deer hair, but if you are gonna spin deer hair, really what you want is GSB thread. So Vivas makes this. Um, I think there's a couple other brands that make it. I think uh, um, Wapsi, which makes the UTC thread, I think also has it. Um, they have a GS, GSB um, thread, th GSP thread. Um, but this stuff is just absolutely insanely strong. However, it is also a little slick, so it's not something, you know, if you're spinning deer hair, this is perfect, because it is slick. You want it kind of slick. You want it to allow the, the deer hair to spin. Um, but you need something that you can put tons of torque on. I mean, you, you know, you want, this thing you could literally bend a saltwater hook with if you really put enough torque. Um, it's really, really strong. Um, but that's kind of what you want. You want something very strong. Um, but it is slick and it's a little too it's a little too slick for a lot of applications. This I think is 200 denier, so it's actually about the same as the 210, right? So it's roughly the same size thread. Um, yeah, 200 D, 200 denier, but it it's like double the strength, maybe even more than double. It's very 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 strong. So if you need something for you know a lot of torque to put down, make the you know. This could even be used for like like the big fly thread for that. Only difference is, like I said, this is very slick. You can even see this almost in the light. Um, this is much more shiny because it's slick. I mean, you put your finger on there, your finger wants to slide. Versus this, there's a little bit of drag. Um, first, you know, so keep that in mind. Now let's talk color. So um, you know, really, if you don't have a lot of money to spend on every color under the, you know, under the rainbow, um, you know, just go white. White is a good all-around color. Now, if you have enough money to get two colors, get white and black. But the nice thing about white, and I'll show you right now, is, is that you could actually color it yourself. Let's bring uh, my vise over. All right, so obviously it's easier just to um, get multiple different colors and then switch it out and use a different color. But a little trick, if all you have is white, you're not stuck with white thread, right? So get some Sharpies and you can color it yourself. So let's say you want a uh, hot pink thread. You just come right through. and just basically paint it. There you go. Now you've got yourself a hot pink thread. Right? There we go. That's it. Pretty simple. There we go. I, I was able to basically turn my white thread into hot pink. Pretty simple, guys. It's you know, um, and it it makes it much cheaper than having to buy all these other threads. Okay. So and then how you tell the sizes? Because I was talking about deniers. Um, so you know, the smaller the denier when you're talking denier. So the smaller the denier, um, the, the finer the thread is. So 70 denier is going to be much more fine than a 210 denier. It's a unit of measurement, basically. So it would be like saying 70 inches is shorter than 200 inches, right? But then there's some threads that go by aught. So this is 16 aught. Um, I think I have some other threads that are aughts, some other brands. Here we go. I've got uni thread here, and this is six aught. So this is sixteen aught and this six aught. Now the six aught seems like a smaller number um, than sixteen, but the sixteen aught is uh, much finer than the six aught. The six aught is larger, um, kind of opposite of hook. So you go one aught hook. Um, it's smaller than a six aught hook, right? So. Um, so if you're going aught, so there's the measurement, the 6 slash O is the aught, here it's 16 slash O. This is a much finer thread 
than that. So if they go by denier, if their measurement size measurement is by denier, the smaller the number, the smaller the thread. But aughts, generally, the larger the number, the smaller the thread. It's opposite. However, the aughts, the, the problem with aught measurement is that it can vary depending on the companies. So for instance, a 16 aught uni thread might be a little different size than the 16 aught vivis. Um, which one is correct? I don't know. Um, I don't think anyone really knows. I, I, it's just kind of what the company decided. This is a this is a 16 aught. This is a six aught. This is a, you know whatever it may be. Um, so generally, a lot a lot of companies are going uh, with the denier, but you know some of them don't. So and some companies, which is funny. So for instance, this GSB thread is also Vivis, just like this is Vivis, yet this is a 16 knot measurement and this is a denier me measurement of 200 denier. Um, so, you know, it kind of jumps around from, you know, some companies jump around, depending on what type of thread that they're offering. So there we go, that's, um, that's how you kind of tell the difference between threads. Now, if you really knew that you only were going to be tying dry flies, let's say, you'd probably want to get like a 70 denier. Uh, maybe even if they're small dry flies, a 16 knot um, or smaller. Um, you know, uh, I don't think it goes much smaller than 16 knot, but smaller than 70 denier. You might want to. Um, you know, and if you find a thread that you like and this is all you're going to use, you can buy every single color from them. It's not going to cost you a fortune. But if you have to buy, you know, a flat thread, a rounded thread um, of each type of size, so, you know, 70 denier, 140 denier, 210, uh, you know, whatever it may be, could cost you a small fortune. I mean, even though these are only $2, $1.50 maybe to three fifty each, depending on the type of thread, the brand, whatnot. Um, it could cost you a small fortune. I mean, we'd be, you'd be talking, you know, probably hundreds of different spools. It could be 500 bucks or more um, to really kind of, if you're tying all types of flies like I do. Um, but if you, you're just specifically tying one type of fly, um, let's say bass flies, you know, and a 210 is good enough for you, and you like the flat, you know, buy all the colors of that. So let's talk about colors then is that, you know, um, generally, depending on the fish that you're fishing for, um, they might like different colors. Just like when you're using the materials, you've got multiple different colors and materials up here, um, what, what you use, um, because different, different fish like different things. So for instance, if you're smallmouth bass fishing, smallmouth love super bright, you know, hot pink, chartreuse, whatever it may be, they like bright, bright colors. Um, for some reason, it's just something that they're attracted to. Doesn't mean that's all they're gonna hit, but generally, a lot of people fish bright colors. Uh, pretty common crankbait, uh, so if conventional fishing, crankbait um, pattern is the clown pattern um, for, for uh, smallmouth, which is a bright orange nose, uh, sometimes pink, um, like, you know, a, a, a chartreuse and white body. You know, if you're going after trout, you know, um, sometimes they, they don't want that. In fact, a lot of times they don't. They want the colors of the f that match the fish that they're eating. I mean, in reality, there's not many hot pink fish. In fact, I don't think there's any hot pink fish that definitely that smallmouth bass eat or chartreuse. Um, but with trout, now if it's, again, everything changes because it could be off water, color, uh, the color could be, uh, everything could change because the water could be off color, but um, generally they're gonna want more kind of colors that match the, the nymphs or the, the bugs or even the fish that they're eating. Um, so, you know, generally you're gonna find that, um, you know, your most common colors are gonna be black, um, actually that's brown, going to be like blacks, browns, olive, uh, white for sure, definitely want white, um, maybe even like a light orange, you know, things like that. Gray, dun colors and whatnot, 
um, is common. Um, and you know, uh, but it really depends on the trout and the fishery. Um, so that's not always the case. Uh, for me it is. Where I fish, they're going to want, these are the colors that they go after. Um, they do occasionally go after a bright red uh, type midge looking thing, which mimics the uh, blood worms. Um, but, uh, you know, that's generally, would probably be good enough right here. This would probably do you for most of your trout flies, you know. Um, for bass, you know, um, like largemouth bass, you know, you're going to want to go, you know, you want to get some chartreuses, browns, you know, even blue for like bait fish patterns. Um, you know, basically threads to match your flies. Again, like I said before, you don't have to spend a ton of money. You can just get white, get a couple of spools of white. If you're only going to tie, you know, five flies a month, um, you know, or you only go fishing three times a year and you tie up maybe 10 flies per time, 30, one of these spools, which is 100 yards, would tie you up probably a good 50 flies. I mean, if not more, depending on what type of fly you're tying. So, you know, you could get one spool of white like this and color them, get some Sharpies. I mean, I, I think I got this whole pack of multiple color Sharpies on Amazon for 10 bucks. And now I've got whatever color I want. You know, I use them also to color the flies, but you know, you can do it. Let's say I don't have, I have a thread that, that is not the right color. I just go to white. Um, make sure I have white in every single kind of thread that I have, and then um, I just color it. If I don't have that color, it can get expensive, so I do that still. Um, so make sure you pick up Sharpies, because that would help. But if you're looking to get some colors, I mean, you know, there's a bunch of charts online that you can find um, that talk about this, that, you know, the color um, selections for most of the fish, that you know, most of the patterns that you're going to be uh, tying for that specific type of fish. So if you guys have any other questions about thread, um, go ahead and drop me a comment in the comment section below the video, um, and I, I always do my very best to respond. Occasionally I'll get some people saying, hey, you didn't respond to me, and I apologize. Sometimes um, I don't see it, but I do my very best to respond to every single comment um, as quick as I can. Um, a lot of times it's right away, uh, but other times it can take a couple hours, um, could even take a day or two. Um, if I'm out on the river, I'm not going to be able to respond. Well guys, I, I really appreciate you guys spending some time with me today and, and watching my video. I hope uh, it was informative and I, I thank you for your continued prayers on my dog. Um, Alright guys, so today I just got the um, results in for my dog and it's not cancer, which is good. It seems like it would be good. However, it's a rare disease, uh, one that not a lot of dogs have. So, so they say that they think it's histocytoma. H i s t i o c y t o m a, which not many dogs get. Um, in ninety percent of cases, it's it's a it's basically a benign tumor. Usually they get one, uh, maybe two. The dog, it's not life-threatening because it's only on the skin and it doesn't travel usually. Um, I'm not gonna read the whole thing. It's this big, long diagnosis about her condition. It would be boring, but if you wanna look it up, histi histocytoma. And basically, um, it's something that grows and um, on dogs, and it's rare. Not they don't know much about it. There's really no treatments for it. They don't know how to fix it. And they say in most cases it's benign and it's non-harmful, and the dog can live for many years. Um, but the it says that um, I read up a little about it more than even what this says, and it says if more than one are present, um, that they have a lower chance of living through it. Well. My dog has like 40 of them right now. Um, pretty much she had one for a little while that was in the ear. They removed it. Um, then another one grew under the ear here. Um, and in the middle of waiting for when we could get a um, uh, surgery for that one, um, more grew and the one in her ear came back. 
And, you know, within a week of when she got that surgery, he had to take out seven of them. Um, and then he took, you know, she's, it's been now another week and she's got 40 of them. It can be life threatening if it gets, um, I guess one can grow in one of her, uh, organs or brain or something, but it, it, it acts, it can act like cancer. It's not cancer, it's just benign, but it acts like cancer in that it starts growing everywhere. And that's what's happening with her. I mean, you rub her back now. I mean, it's gotten worse and worse. You rub her back and of course she's got long hair, so it pads it, but you know, you can rub it and it feels like rubbing an alligator. She's got so many of them. Um, maybe more than 40. I'm just, it's a lot. Um, every, every time I pet her now, it's I'm finding a new one. They're growing quickly. And so they say that once you di they diagnose the dog with this, usually they have anywhere from a month to, you know, it could be two, three years. Um, but, and usually it's older dogs that get it. It is rare for a young dog to get it, and it's even more rare for there to be this many. In fact, I did some research, I read on it, and I've heard of cases with dogs having like five lesions, and them saying, well, it has five, so looks like it's an aggressive one. She has 40. She has 40 of them. So I talked to the doctor, and the doctor said, you know, let's um, let her kind of, you know, if she's not in pain, luckily they're not painful, except for where the surgery is, that's a little painful. <laughs> um, but let her kind of just, you know, see how she does. If she starts, once organs start failing and let's say it gets into her brain or, you know, gets one of her organs, it goes internal rather than external. Well, she's already got one really deep in the ear, so it's already kind of internal. Um, once that happens, then um, to, we have to look at easing her pain, you know? And he's like, I don't know when that'll happen. It's luck of the draw. He said, but it's, with her case, that many, it's definitely gonna be on one of the organs or something drastic uh, soon. So he said, prepare, it could be less than a month. So, uh, you know, it's sad. Um, he said, you could have some luck and have it a lot longer. Um, but he doesn't want to do any more surgery. Why cut the dog up if you don't need to? He said, because it doesn't do any good. You cut one out, another one's going to grow. So, that's the diagnosis, histocytoma. And you know, it doesn't look good. It actually looks worse than, than cancer in, in reality. And that's what he said. He said, usually this would be a good diagnosis um, because it usually means benign and the dog has a long time. But with the, the aggressiveness of the growth, it's worse than cancer because there's no known treatments. I mean, you can at least do treatment for a dog with cancer, but there's none. There's no treatments for this. Um, they just don't know enough about it. It's so rare. They've never done kind of research, really, that much research on it. So... Yeah, but with her problem with so many of them, um, it just, he said that because there's no known treatment, there's not much that they can do. You just got to kind of hope and pray that one doesn't hit her organs soon. And thank you for your continued support with the channel and watching and, and, uh, um, and sharing the videos. It really helps when you guys share the videos. Uh, I know some of you have been sharing them on your Facebook and Twitter or whatnot, and and I appreciate that so much. Um, you know, the more more people watching, um, uh, you know, the better I can improve this channel. Making this channel isn't free. Um, it actually costs me money. Uh, it costs me more money than I actually bring in from revenue. So, um, you know, it, it just increased views, more people watching, just means that it would give me better resources to be able to produce better videos and possibly more videos. So. Also, if you guys could let me know um, anything that you specifically want me to do, um, if there's any rivers nearby that you think uh, you want to check out, I can't like go drive to New York from Colorado. It's just not going to happen. Um, but if they're re relatively in my area, I'll, I'll I'll make an effort in the next couple weeks or months or whatever to try to make make a, a drive out. You know, within you know, a three or four hour drive, I can do that. You know, and also if there's anything you specifically want me to talk about, if there's anything, any kind of info that you have some questions about and you want it on the, 
uh, on my channel update, uh, I'll do that. I'll definitely do that. Or if there's a fly, specific fly that you want to learn how to tie, you're like, hey, can you tie it for me? I'll do it. Just let me know. So go down to the description section and, and check that out. I always put some extra info that I might have left out in the reviews or whatnot. Um, I do appreciate everything, guys, and I will see you guys on the next video. Now, you guys go catch some fish, all right?